The five-minute meditation is sheer magic. It's very simple and very, very, very beautiful, and it works. It means business, and it will immediately help you to calm down, to get out of negative thinking and thoughts and worries and fears. Come back to reality where the birds are singing, and it will also put you in touch with your own ground of being, your own inner ground of good from which you can flow and live and move and have your being and begin to see you be, begin to see solutions instead of just looking at problems and sitting around worrying about problems and fretting and getting all nervous and anxious and so on you'll be able to begin to see solutions begin to realize solutions into being and you'll be able to act on what you see is true you'll be able to act on what you see is wise and you will find a new natural control a new natural control whereby those things that used to upset you now you'll observe those things and instead of being upset you'll just calmly observe them it'll basically add a whole new dimension of thoughtfulness and patience to your life now once you begin the meditation it's very important to continue because if you stop you go back to your old patterns again you will have elected to go back to your old ways and you remember them you remember all the worries doubts and fears and anxieties and striving and huffing and puffing and effort and will and challenges getting exhausted and tired and all you remember all of that so let's try this new way for a little while i want to tell you in this little lecture I just give you a few clues as to why it works and I also want to give you a few clues about how to go out in the world and hang on to this nice meditative state. Hang on to it when you're out in the world. Okay, so let's begin. First of all, let's start with a few clues so you can hang on to the nice meditative state that you gain by doing your little meditation. A few clues. First of all, always do what you know is right in your heart. See, in the past, what has happened is you've second-guessed yourself. You kind of knew what was right. When you were a little child, you wanted to be honest and fair and truthful with people, and you wanted to speak spontaneously, but a lot of times you got slapped down for being honest. You got put down, or people mocked you and made fun of you for being old-fashioned or innocent or what have you. Now you must, once again, refine your inner ground and flow from it. So you know, if you know in your heart what is right, you sense what is right, then you must, that's what you must do, okay? Always do what you know is right in your heart, and you'll be yourself. You won't have stress and conflict because you didn't do what you knew in your heart. This is very important. Let me give you a little explanation. What you have done up until now, where you've begun your little five-minute meditation, what you've always done is you've gotten lost in thinking. In fact, in school and so on, they taught you to get lost in thinking. They encouraged you to study and concentrate and think and so on. Plus, when you went out in the world and you failed and you copped out on principle and you became angry with people and resentful and so forth, then you would hide in thinking. You would hide in fantasy. You would hide in imagination to escape from reality where you had failed. Well, no more now. Now we must go out in the world and bring forth what we know is right and speak the truth and do what's right. You see, then you won't have any conflict. You won't have to hide it in the imagination. But when you do hide in the imagination, the thoughts that arise in the imagination those thoughts are not your thoughts those are thoughts from the world they come in from the world outside programming things that you've heard things that people told you suggestions that people have made various suggestions and so on it all comes in from the outside it's not really your thinking okay no wonder you felt conflict you weren't really living your own life that's what you get in the imagination. And then, of course, in thinking and in imagination, then you also get fantasies, which can sometimes be pleasurable, see, when you're hiding in them, but ultimately they cause conflict because you're escaping from reality. But when you hide in fantasy long enough, that it becomes nightmares. See, you begin to have negative thoughts, all manner of negative thoughts, which are not your thoughts either. Those are not your thoughts. It's negative, some negative programming coming from outside. See, and those thoughts defeat, those thoughts want to defeat you. They want to make you resentful. They want you to give up. They want you to throw in the towel. That's what those thoughts want. See, they're not your friend and they're not your thoughts. So now you must simply observe them and let them pass. Just what, see them and let them pass. Just don't indulge them. 
Don't indulge those kinds of thoughts. Okay? Your meditation will help you to do that. That's why we do the meditation. That's why we look at the little sparkly light on the inside of our eyelid when these thoughts arise. We learn how not to get lost in thoughts and come back to reality. Okay? So now, down in thinking, down in thoughts, down in imagination, that is not your enlightened reason. That is not your intuition. That's not your conscience. That's not your ground of being. That's not that from which you could flow to live your own life, a wholesome life, a creative life, a thoughtful life, a moral life, a principled life, see, a successful life. That's why it hasn't happened for you properly. And if things did work out, sometimes you felt guilt over it because uh, you, 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 you arrived at them ambitiously. So now, when you are no longer lost in thought, lost in imagination, lost in thinking, instead you're in the present, and you begin to move intuitively, you begin to be impelled intuitively to do what is right. See, it's very beautiful. What do they say? Faith without works is dead. So you know wordlessly in your heart what's right, and then you do it. See, you complete the action. And that's how you bring the good into your life. You bring the good into your life by realizing what is right, what is fair, what is just, what to do or what not to do. And then you simply do it. It's very beautiful. Okay? Now, another thing is you must be honest, fair, brave, and kind, just like the, the old Boy Scout motto. Honest, fair, brave, and kind. Because if you're not, then you're not doing what's right. You're not doing what you know in your heart if you're not. See? You must be honest with people, you must be fair, and you must have some courage, and you must be kind. Kind doesn't mean being wimpy. Kind doesn't mean being a people pleaser. Kind means being um, having a twinkle in your eye, having a light touch, being cheerful, that sort of thing. Okay? Stay out of daydreaming and excessive thought. Watch out for resentment. Now, resentment is something you have to watch out for, because resentment is a little bit of hate. And in the past, you indulged resentment. See, when, 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 um, when people were mean or when they were cruel, when they pressured you or when they teased you and so on. See, you, you didn't know how to deal with them properly, especially when you were a little kid. You didn't know how to deal with it properly. So what happened? You became angry and then you became resentful. See, and the resentment, resentment you, in, you began to indulge the resentment. Your ego liked it. Your pride liked it. Resentment. But the problem with resentment is that it's a little bit of hate, and because it's hate, it cuts you off from what you know in your heart is right. See, we know it's not right to hate people. So from now on, when people are mean or cruel or what have you, just observe that they are. That doesn't mean you have to pretend that they're nice or that they're wonderful. It, it just means observe them without hating them. Okay? And those people in the past that have failed, your mom, your dad, other people, don't hate them any longer. See that they were victims too. They became angry and resentful. They got lost in their thoughts. They got cut off from reality cut off from their ground of good, programmed from the outside, and they too were victims. So just forgive them. In other words, don't hate them anymore. Don't resent them. Okay? Another thing that will help help you to maintain your meditative state is to speak up about things. Okay? In other words, don't be a doormat. Learn to speak up for yourself. You have a right to speak up, but with kindness, patience, and firmness, not with anger. See? If somebody cuts in front of you in line and just say, excuse me, I was here first. And then if they make a, if they make a fuss and they act like you're, you're being mean or they act like uh, you're lying or they try to confuse you, then just observe all of that. Say, I was here first. Thank you. Okay? And if sometimes when you speak up, anger comes out. So you have a lot of suppressed anger. You have a lot of suppressed anger. So now if you speak up about something, somebody cuts in front of you in line, you speak up about it, maybe some anger will come out. Then all you have to do is say, I'm sorry about the anger, but I'm still right about what I said. Learn to overlook offenses. That means don't be offended. Don't puff up, see, in pride. Don't puff up uh, as a judge. See, our ego always wants to play God. We want to be king or queen. We want to receive worship and glory. And, that, of course, that puts us in conflict with God when we play God. But then we also become a judge, see, where we judge other people and condemn them in our mind and so forth. See, and if someone... If someone Offers a, offers a little uh, temptation to you by being a little bit cruel or a little bit mean to you. See, if they offend you in some way, in some way, then don't be puffed up with it. Just notice it and let it pass. It's not important. Don't let it puff your ego up. That'll put you in conflict with God, puts you in conflict with what you know is right in your heart. So just let insults roll off your back like water off a duck's back. 
See? People say something mean, let it go in one ear and out the other. Just don't pay it any mind. Don't seek to get a high out of things. Don't look for a high. Don't look for excessive pleasure. Your work was meant to provide you a, a modest um, modest pleasure, modest fulfillment. So get the modest fulfillment out of work, but not too much fulfillment. See, don't let it puff up your ego. When you enjoy things, different activities, recreation, sports, and so forth, that's fine. It's fine to enjoy those things, but just don't get into them too much. Don't get a big high out of them. Don't get energy out of them. Don't get all excited. Say, have enjoy a calm, a quiet joy in such th things, a modest joy. Don't pre-plan what to say. Learn, be spontaneous. Be spontaneous. If you plan ahead, it's your ego. See, and then you, you make some plan what you're going to do or what you're going to say. Then you go and say it. And it's all wrong because the timing is wrong. It's not quite right. See, remember when you were a little kid and your parents were talking at you instead of to you? It's because they pre-planned what they were going to say. So I have faith. Face the moment and know that in that moment, you'll know what to say or what not to say. It'll just come to you. You'll just blurt it out and it'll be right. And it'll be so beautiful because it's spontaneous. See, and you're speaking from the heart. Learn to speak from the heart. Don't put on a show for other people or for God. No need to cry crocodile tears and so on. Just go about your business quietly, okay? If you hurt somebody in the past, then just go to them and say, look, I, I did this and this to you. I see that it's wrong now. I'm sorry. I apologize. And then go on with your, with your life. Speak simply. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't exaggerate things. Don't look for support from others. From now on, if you know what's right, then just do what's right. See, if you see what's right or what's fair, what's true, then just see it and know it. See, it doesn't need, it's like they say math is, is uh, self-evident. The truth is self-evident. See, just like a math theorem is self-evident. See that it's true and know that it's true and don't doubt it. See, or see what's right and know what's right and don't doubt it. And You don't need support from other people. If you get support from other people, if you need their reassurance, then you become dependent upon them. See, watch out for that. Don't set goals for yourself. Be industrious, but not ambitious. See, in the past, people challenged you and teased you with goals. Goals to study, goals to work, and so on. Even goals, even religious goals. Just be spontaneous. If you like doing a little reading, then read. If you don't, then don't. You'll find your way. Slowly but surely, you'll find your way. You'll find work that's suitable for you. You'll find your purpose in life. You'll you'll find yourself in the right place with the right people doing what you're supposed to be doing. And it'll all happen so beautiful. It'll be like magic. In the past, you always tried to plan everything. It didn't work out. And before you knew it, you became resentful. You may have even ended up hiding from life. So be spontaneous. Do your meditation. And watch the magic come into your life. So now... I'm just about ready to end this uh, little lecture. I just want to add a couple of more little thoughts. This meditation is different from other meditations. All your life, what you've been doing is escaping from reality, escaping into fantasy and planning and scheming to be great or to be glorious, see, or to judge other people. And then what happened? You became guilty over that, or you went out in the world and tried to be a big person and be ambitious and and then you failed in reality or you became a wimp and people walked all over you and so you hid in your imagination. Well, most meditations are just more of that, more of the same old, same old that doesn't work. You know, all the visualizations and all that sort of thing. It's all just hiding in the imagination again. That's not where we want to be. We want to be out of the imagination. We want to be in reality. And then different things like staring at symbols, you know, mandalas and so on and so forth. It's, it's hypnotic. It's hypnotic. It's more outside control. Things like chanting and so on. Those things are also, uh, those are hypnotic. You don't want any more hypnosis. That's been your problem in the past. Imagination, hypnosis, outside control, suggestions and thoughts coming in from the outside. See, then you did things. You didn't even know why you did them. Why did I do that? See, where does that idea come from? Well, it came from outside. So now you don't, you don't want to be under control of others anymore. You want to learn how to flow from within, to be spontaneous, to be natural, to be, uh, to be yourself. 
Hey, the meditation that I have is very beautiful, so stick with it. Now, before I conclude, I just want to mention a couple of little technical things. First of all, the instructions are to be aware of your hands. And when you are, your hands will begin to tingle and become gently wa warm and tingly. Your whole body will become tingly and warm. Now, sometimes people's hands don't become warm because they're trying too hard. Your hands don't become warm, that's okay. Just continue to do the meditation, that's fine. Just realize that undoubtedly you're putting a little bit of effort in. And when we, when we try, when we struggle, when we stress ourselves a little bit, then instead of uh, getting warm, your hands will uh, not get warm. So don't worry about it. If your hands don't get warm, then just continue with the, with the exercise. They, they will eventually, they will become a little bit warm and tingly and eventually your whole body will feel warm and cozy. It will be very beautiful. If it doesn't happen right away, don't worry about it. Just continue. Now the other thing is, a lot of times when people begin this meditation, you become aware of anger that was there, that you didn't know was there. You, be, you become, See, now you're becoming more aware. It'll make you more aware. So you'll become aware perhaps of some anger inside. What's well, always been there. That anger has always been there. You just didn't see it. See, it was suppressed and repressed, so now it's there, so just observe it. That's all. Just notice it. Okay? The tendency is to think that it's new anger because you didn't notice it before. It's not new. It was always there. Okay? Things surface. When things surface, you're just becoming aware of them now. They were there, always there, but they were repressed and suppressed. See, you didn't want to see them. Now there they are. But now, with your awareness and the fact that you are now in touch with your own ground of good, now you also have your own ground of good. You have that inner flow, see, with which to observe things. Okay? Now you will have the power to stand back and observe them. Don't resent what you see. Just watch it, okay? And know that it was always there. It's not something new. It was there before. Now you're just becoming aware of it, which is good. It's coming out to be observed and seen in the light. Now, finally, one more thing. When you begin your meditation, a lot of people will make very fast and very good progress. But then th doubts arise, like, is this really worth it? Is it working? See, or after you get used to it, after the initial the initial contrast, you know, the relief from your old, the old super stressed, worried kind of existence to this new one. The re at first, the, re the contrast is tremendous. It's wonderful. It's a big relief. But once you become accustomed to it, then there's not so much of, a, of a, the contrast anymore. Then you say, well, is this still working? Yes, it's working. Stick with it. Okay. And the other thing is that your doubts will arise. Doubts will arise and say, oh, this is no good, this is weird, this is strange, Roland doesn't know what he's talking about, what are you doing this for, you don't need this, you're beyond this. Just observe those thoughts, they're not your friend, they're not helping you. Those thoughts would like you to stop doing the meditation, okay? Keep doing the meditation. Ignore the thoughts. Don't believe them or disbelieve them, just observe them and continue to do your meditation, okay? Well, enjoy the beautiful day, and I will say bye-bye, and we'll see you soon in another one of my lectures or in one of my books or one of my radio programs.